Good morning. Uh, my name is um, Dr. Lundy and I am one of the clinical psychologists in student health and counseling services. Um, my role here at the university is to provide support to students who are in distress. Um, and so related to that, we want to talk about how distress can impact your academic performance. And so I, each, I gave each of you a sticky note. So now um, I'm going to ask that you get out something to write with um, and that <clears throat> you scoot a little bit closer to one another because I'm going to ask you to do something time sensitive and um, I want to make sure that we're able to do so. And maybe even if you want, you could come join us on the first row. Yeah. Okay. And I'll participate with you so that you don't feel like I'm um, asking you to do something that I wouldn't be willing to do myself. Okay. Just close enough so, I mean, if you don't, feel, if you feel comfortable sitting right there, you can sit right there. Um, no, it means that we're all kind of in tight quarters, but it's only a few of us, and then you can move after we do the activity. Okay. So, got something to write with? <clears throat> okay. So, on your sticky note, everyone, I'd like for you to take five seconds to do this task that I'm gonna give you, okay? Okay. So, um, with your non-dominant hand, I need you to write your middle or last name. Okay. Okay. And now, um, may I borrow your pencil? I'm going to do the same thing with my non dominant hand. I'm going to write my last name. Okay. Now, everybody place a sticky note on your forehead. And turn to your neighbor. So the two of you turn to each other. And I want you to read what the sticky note says. Okay. Ryan. Okay. All right. So take the sticky note off. Okay. So what was that experience like initially when I asked you to write with your non-dominant hand? And then the second part was I asked you to engage with someone that you didn't know and have them be um, an observer of the work that you did. How would you describe that? What would you say that was like? Okay. What do you think? It's a little uncomfortable writing with my left hand. A little uncomfortable writing with your left hand. What about the idea of um, an element that I didn't add because people were having trouble with their writing utensils? It's only going to give you five seconds to do it, but you had way more than five seconds yeah. to do it. So people were kind of fiddling. So I was like, okay. Um, when I've done the, um, this little experiment in the past, what people say is the time crunch makes it a little bit difficult to kind of get something done that you're not used to doing. Um, and then also um, connecting with someone or having someone be critical of what you've done when you are not really comfortable with what you're doing, that that can be a little uncomfortable, as you said. Um, and so my goal was to make you a little uncomfortable in an, in an, in completing a task that you're not familiar with because oftentimes in, as college students we are asked to do things that make us a little uncomfortable 
that we don't have enough time, we don't feel like we have enough time to do what it is that we need to do. And we're asked to do it in environments where we, um, we don't know people or we have to get to know people. We have to come out of our comfort zone. And doing all of that can generate um, a feeling, uh, it's one word, can generate a feeling, and you may know this word because we've talked about this when you um, witnessed another presentation that I did, but it can generate a feeling of, I want you to, to think about the one word that either, either describes what we, the experience you just had was a little uncomfortable or maybe would describe um, a word that you might describe college life, college adjustment, um, how it feels to be um, completing assignments uh, in a new environment. What's one word that you might use to describe um, some of the things that have happened as you've been adjusting to college? What's a word that you might use to describe that? Stress. Yeah, absolutely. There we go. Um, I wasn't sure how you were, if you, if you would describe that given kind of the looks on your faces, but um, and maybe the looks on your faces are feeling somewhat stressed. I know it is that time of the semester where things are kind of ramping up. Um, how was it that you were able to, to determine that that was the word I was thinking of? Because um, it's basically just what college is overall with your classes. Mm -hmm. It's just stress and crunching and everything. Yeah, little time to do what you need to do. Uh, all this new stuff, you have expectations. Basically, college is stressful. Um, and so what we're going to talk about, let's talk today about wellness and college success and how um, being able to manage whether it's stress or essentially being able to manage your mental health uh, allows you to achieve academic success. So um, we're going to watch a small clip to help us kind of start this conversation. Let's see if the clip starts. With the Laughing Cow's nine flavorful varieties of creamy cheese. Okay. Some of the more common mental illnesses 
are depression, stress and anxiety, phobias, eating disorders, obsessive compulsive disorder, bipolar or personality disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder, and schizophrenia. Okay. <clears throat> so, who cares? Based on what we talked about or what was talked about in that video, why do we care about mental health? I guess I should turn the light back on. Why do we care? Um, yeah. It impacts every single thing we do. Every single thing we do. Um, and as it relates to our experience here at NCCU, taking care of yourself is a vital part of academic and personal success. Developing healthy self-care behaviors, um, study habits, um, relationships with others, uh, all of those improve self-esteem as well. Come on in. Thank you for joining us. Hi. Come on in. And we are going to ask you to sit down this way because we're it's so few of us, sir. Excuse me. Oh, oh you left something. Yeah. Okay. And you're joining us. Okay. Um, so we're talking today about um, mental health and wellness and how it relates to your academic success. So I had everybody do a, a brief activity where I, we took a sticky note and we, put the, we asked you to write with your non-dominant hand. Um, I put them in a stressful situation, essentially. And we talked about how um, stress, as it relates to your college experience, can be something that ultimately impacts your mental health. Okay, stress is one of the primary things that impacts our mental health and without being um, managed well, it can lead to poor or it can lead to mental illness. So what do you think the difference between mental health and mental illness is and how that that term is used? What does that mean? Maybe based on what we saw in the video, we just watched a, a short video as well. Um, what's the difference between mental health and mental illness? at a point where it's already has progressed to a mental illness, mm -hmm. such as, um, and I want to say it's a mental illness, I call it uh, extreme anxiety, mm -hmm. you're basically like you say, you know, you got thoughts running through your head constantly, you're getting mad all the time, Yeah. and it's, I say something that's progressed mm -hmm. over a period of time. Progress. Okay. So mental illness is the result of a progression or an accumulation of things. Yeah. What about mental health? What does that mean? Um, your overall mental well-being, like what are your thoughts? Like, mm -hmm. you know, like a, more of a, an assessment of yourself. Okay. What about others of you? Do we agree, disagree? That's what she said. So true or false, everyone experiences mental health. True or false, everyone? Mental health. I would say yes. Is that the consensus? What do you think? True or false, everyone experiences mental health. Okay. So it's great. I'm glad you I'm glad you paused because that may, helps me to know that we need to clarify the terms a little bit better. So mental illness is not necessarily something that we all might experience, but mental health as a result of just being a human, everyone has has mental health. Every mental health exists and it's and it's measured um, whether or not you have mental illness is based on how well you are functioning or how well your mental health is. So your mental illness is measured by how well your mental health status is. So one of the questions that I like to ask is, where is your mental health status? Do you know whether or not your mental health is in a place um, where it may be at risk for um, developing a mental illness? Just kind of off the top of your head, do you know? Do you think you have a sense of what your mental health is and whether or not it's in a good space? Yeah. Okay, we have a I know, we have a it's not, we have a um, I don't know what my mental health health status is. Yeah, um, how, do, how is that something we might determine? What do you think? Mm-hmm, how would you find out? What would you do? Either go talk to someone. Yeah. That is, 
So we have to go talk to somebody. What else? Well, there's a lot of articles and like books or things online that you can do like little tests to see. Like, okay, so you can do a self-assessment. Mm-hmm. So here's the real, the real life question um, that we've got to put in the room. What was the first thing you thought about? So I told them I'm a clinical psychologist. What was the first thing you thought about when I said the word psychologist? What is that? What comes up for you? When, mental health. Mental health. What else might come up? Now, when we thought of like you mean first thing. Yeah, the idea of somebody being a psychologist, not necessarily me, but the idea of me mental health. We're talking about mental health. We're talking about psychologists or psychology. What comes up when you when you think about those terms? Because we we've, we've asked. How do you know what your mental health status is? Um, but I think that there's a barrier. We find that there's a barrier to finding out about what your mental health status is. And it's because of some association we make between psychology, mental health, um, mental well-being. What's, what, what association do we make with that, those terms? Like with your job? Just with the idea of mental health, with the idea of talking to a psychologist, what would what association might people make? Maybe not you, but people in your life. Got it. What are you gonna? What are you gonna? The treatment for what? What? What would? What would the treatment? Like when you think of psychology, you think of a person sitting on the bed and. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. What what type of person do you think of that does that? Somebody with a mental issue. Somebody with a mental issue. Yeah. <laughs> or a problem that they have. Mm -hmm. So not we 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 distance ourselves from that, right? We don't we don't think it includes us. Yeah. Right. Okay, yeah. yeah. So I asked the question: Does everybody have mental health? And we were most of us were like, Yeah. Does everybody have mental illness? No. Look, that that's not me. So. What um, my initial question or my other question had been, what is our mental health status? Um, if you are not comfortable talking with someone like me or even asking the question, what's the difference between mental illness and mental health? Then sometimes we do go around not knowing how well we're functioning and not getting the support that we need to help us to, to get to a better space. So how do you personally, I want each of you to take a few minutes and on that sticky note or on another sheet of paper, I want you to identify three ways that you know personally when you feel like, you know what, maybe my mental health or my emotional health and well-being is kind of off right now. I'm not, I'm not feeling my best self. Okay, so what do you want to say? Three, three ways that you might know that when you're not in the greatest mental, mental health status. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Who would like to share? What were the three things that came up? Um, I said attitude. Uh, waking up in the morning. Okay. Difficulty waking up in the morning. Well, I hate the morning time. Got it. I'm not a morning person. Okay. You said attitude, difficulty waking up, and then what was the third? Oh, people. Okay. So not liking them. Depends. <laughs> <laughs> what about people? Mm -hmm. So kind of just being, you know you're not in the greatest state when you're more irritable. That's what I hear you saying. What about you? I said, I know, I know I'm not in the greatest state when I'm in my math class, in my chemistry <laughs> class, and when I'm studying for math and chemistry. Okay. 
So how would you summarize those three things? What would you say your mental health is impacted by what? Say that again. Say that a little louder. Mm-hmm. Come on in. <coughs> Excuse me. Come on in. Have a seat. Okay. Um, you have something to write with? Nope. Okay. You're in luck. I'm gonna give you a sticky note. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay. So we are talking about mental health and how it relates to academic performance. Um, that's kind of a summary. And I asked the question, and you can write this down too. What are three ways that you know that your mental health is not in the greatest space? So what would you, what, what did you say? Uh, probably if I'm not like sleeping. Definitely. Not sleeping. Yep. Like, like, a headache. Headache. Or if it's like um, I can't focus. Difficulty focusing. You're, you 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 really took some time to think about that one. That's cool. And I, what are you noticing about the differences between your classmates?